you guys wanted a deep dive into what's happening on the Great Barrier Reef. And, uh, well, let's just say the footage we found is pretty alarming. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely eye-opening. We've got this YouTube video. It's uh, packed with drone shots that really show the damage from coral bleaching. Mm -hmm. And we've got this article that explains, like, the science behind it all. It's interesting how these sources, you know, make it so real. We always hear coral bleaching, coral bleaching, but this is like a whole ecosystem, you know, struggling. Totally. Yeah. So just to back up for a sec, the YouTube video actually does a really good job explaining what coral bleaching is. Basically, it's like a plant and an animal living together, like this perfect partnership. Right, this delicate balance. And when the ocean temperature goes up, even a little, it throws everything off. And then like the coral, like freaks out right it's kind of yeah it's like it kicks out its roommate its roommate the algae called zooxanthellae they live inside the coral oh right right and these algae they give the coral its color but they also provide food through mm. photosynthesis mm. so without them the coral essentially starves so it's not just that the color changes it's like it's way more serious the coral is like in trouble exactly it becomes really vulnerable to disease and it's not just a few corals here and there. We're talking about the Great Barrier Reef. The article had these crazy pictures before and after shots of the coral. Oh, wow. It's wild. One day it's this vibrant, colorful place, and then poof, gone. It's like an underwater desert. It's like that everywhere. The scale of it is huge. The article says it's about the size of Victoria and Tasmania combined. No way. That's massive. It's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it supports so much marine life. And it's a big part of Australia's economy, tourism. You know? Of course. So it's not just an environmental issue. It affects everything. It's like a domino effect. Okay. So how are scientists even keeping track of all this? I mean, isn't it mostly divers and snorkelers? That's the traditional method, which, you know, hats off to them. Yeah. But the article talked about how that has some limitations. Yeah. Yeah, like it's pretty impressive what they do. Right. But it takes forever to cover any real distance. And it's got to be expensive sending people out there all the time. Makes sense. So what are they doing instead? Drones. Drones. Yeah, drones. It's kind of amazing. The YouTube video shows them flying over the reef, you know, just capturing everything. So they can see the bleaching from the air. Yeah. It, I mean, really see the level of detail these things get is incredible. Like they can zoom in on a single coral, you know, and see how it's doing. There's no way you could get that from a boat or even diving. Wow. So what do they do with all that data? The article mentioned this platform, Geonator. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, Geonator. Kind of like, I don't know, a social media platform. But for coral reef scientists, you know, is where they upload their data from the drones and everything. So they can all see each other's research. Yeah, exactly. And it's not just, you know, looking at pretty pictures. They can actually analyze the data together, mm. collaborate in a way that just wasn't possible before. The article had this perfect example with Dr. George Roth. Wait, wasn't he the one who filmed that drone footage from like March 2024 around Lizard Island? That's the one. He uploaded all his findings to Geonadir. Yeah. And a few months later, there was this other team of scientists. Yeah. They were planning a trip to Lizard Island, but for something totally different. But then they saw Roth's data on Geonadir, and it was like a light bulb moment, you know. So they used his data for their own research. They did. They went back to Lizard Island in June and used his data as a baseline. Like, they went back to the exact same coral colonies he'd filmed. Wow. How did it look? Not good. The mortality rate in the areas that had been bleached was 97%. 97? Are you serious? The YouTube video has the before and after footage. It's shocking. Three months, that's all it took. That's unbelievable. But wait, that was only possible because they had access to that original data, right? Yeah. On Geonadir. Exactly. It's a perfect example of how this kind of open collaboration can lead to these really important discoveries. And it happens so fast, too, which is the other huge advantage here. I mean, to get those kinds of results so quickly, it's crazy. Yeah. Usually it takes months, years even, to process all the data from a research trip. But with this, it's practically real time. So it's like, what do they call it? Back of the envelope sign. Right, back of the envelope. The article talked about how five scientists all working remotely were able to put this whole picture together in like a matter of days. Wow. It's unbelievable, right? So it's kind of terrifying, actually, that it's happening that fast. Yeah, I know what you mean. But this whole thing with the data it makes you wonder, like, what happens to it all? That's what I thought was really interesting about the article. It's not just about, like, the science itself. It talks a lot about open access data. Yeah. Because... I mean, we hear these numbers like 97% coral mortality. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, that's awful. But then what? 
Exactly. What do we do with that information? That's where this open access idea comes in. So it's got to be available to everyone. Well, yeah. Policymakers, other scientists, even just like regular people who want to learn about it. The article talked about this FAIR principle. FAIR. Yeah. Findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. That's what the data needs to be. Okay. I'm going to be honest. Some of those went over my head, but I think I get it. Basically, it has to be easy to find, easy to understand, and easy to use, no matter who you are. Makes sense. Because, I mean, this isn't just a scientist problem, right? It's all of us. Right. We're all on the same team here. Exactly. So the more people who understand what's happening, the better, right? Totally. That's the whole idea behind open science. It's like, imagine this global network of people. All working together. Yeah, all working together to protect the reef. Scientists, policymakers, even just everyday people. That's actually, that's kind of hopeful. It is hopeful. It shows that we can do something. It's yeah. not like a hopeless situation. So, okay, we've taken this deep dive. We've looked at the science. We've looked at the technology. What's the takeaway? What do people need to remember? I think the biggest thing is we have the tools and we have the knowledge. What we need now is the will to act, you know? To work together. Exactly. Yeah. The question is, can we do it fast enough? That's the real challenge. That's something to think about. And on that note, we'll wrap it up for this deep dive. Thanks for listening, everybody.